Hello there, my name is Jakob Hack, I'm your host and you're watching a Hacker Tech episode. And before we start, I just gotta say that I'm not a regular tech channel. So if you're not into mobile music production, then do not subscribe. <laughs> The first original hub, I bought that for my own money. Now, this new one that I got, I was actually sent by Uni Accessories as a gift. Well, they call it a gift, but I'm sure they're hoping that I'm gonna talk about it on this channel. And now I am, and I'm choosing to do that without getting paid because I just simply like the hub. And I know that a lot of people would be very happy with this hub. So my USB-C saga continues. It started out with me trying to find a perfect USB-C hub to use in my studio with my iPad. I'm a mobile music producer, and so I of course also want that USB-C hub to be portable. And let me tell you, it was a really painful journey. I went through so many hubs, they all broke on me, so much money wasted, and they all broke in the same place. So I didn't just lose the ability to connect to the USB stuff on the hub or just the charging. No, I lost connection to all of it because the cable broke or the connector broke. So I started looking for USB-C hubs where the cable wasn't permanently attached, as it is with so many USB-C hubs. Because if it's not, if you can remove it, then you can just switch that cable out if it ever breaks, which is cheaper and easier, and you won't have to get rid of your expensive hub that you've already grown attached to. What was that? Attached? Either way, I was super happy, super excited when I found the Union Pro Hub by Uni Accessories. Now, this was actually a Kickstarter-based project. The project was really successful. It had a lot of backers and now it's a retail product. You can actually order it from Amazon and also from their own website. Now, back when I did my review, I had only had it for a few weeks. So I wasn't too certain if I could just tell people to go and buy it now. But now, after having used it for several months, I can say that I'm super happy with how it's performed. And I highly recommend this USB-C hub. So I want to make it really, really clear about the different models that Uni Accessories are offering. Right now, there are actually two Union Pro hubs out there, but one of them is a plus model, and that is the new one. So if you're looking for a USB-C hub and you want to get one of these, then get the plus one, because that one has got these new upgrades. So what are these upgrades? One of them, well, let me just read something from the email here. This time, the connector's length should meet your expectations, so you won't need a USB-C extension cable, lol. The thing that Echo here is referring to is the fact that I was using a USB-C extension in order to get the cable to where I wanted it to go in order to connect it to my iPad. You see, this was the original length of the original Union Pro Hub. And that's also why there's this huge segment in that video in where I talk about choosing a proper cable, because my advice was if you bought that hub, you should also buy a longer cable. So you needed to think about data speeds, thickness of the cable, how much power you want flowing through that cable, stuff like that. You don't need to think about any of that now because Uni Accessories has added a 90 centimeter long proper USB-C cable for high data speeds. So yeah. The second thing they did was upgrade the HDMI output. You see, the old one, the Union Pro, it can only do 4K 30 hertz. But with the Union Pro Plus, you now have the HDMI being able to output 4K at 60 hertz. So it's a considerable upgrade. Now, the third thing they've done is they've added some markings to the chassis of the hub. You see, the old one, it didn't have any markings. I mean, sure, it had these, you know, around the SD card slots. But now on the new Union Pro Plus, they've actually added markings on all of the ports. And I think this is a very nice touch. 
So what do you actually get when you buy a Union Pro Plus USB-C hub? Well, you get the 90 centimeter USB-C high-speed data cable and you get the unit. The unit is wrapped with this uh, silicon thing and it basically functions as a bumper for the unit, so it protects it. Now, the unit is housed in a aluminum casing, which also works as a heat sink. So it's really, really good at dispelling heat. There are little chips in here that can get very, very hot when you're using the HDMI output because you're basically using a little mini computer in there. Now, on one side, you have two SD card slots, one for micro and one for the regular sized SD cards. And then you have two USB 3.0 high speed data ports. Now, on the other side, you can find a 2.0 port. Next to that, we have a 1G LAN port. And then we have the 4K 60 FPS HDMI port. And the last port on this unit is the PD port. It basically allows you to connect a charger to your USB-C hub. And the size or the wattage of the charger you're choosing is extremely important because when you are using a hub with something like a tablet, you want to make sure that the charger you're connecting to it has enough power to power everything that connects to the actual hub. If you're using a pro iPad, then you can usually get away with the adapter that you get with the unit. But in some cases, you might need something with a higher wattage. So it's very important you choose one that has enough power to power not just the charging for the iPad, but everything connected to the hub. Now, apart from all of those ports, there is, of course, the host port that allows you to connect the hub to an actual device like a laptop or desktop computer or smart tablet or smartphone, an iPad in my case. So here's where you connect that cable supplied with the UniHub in this port and then to the device you want to connect it to. If you don't have enough power for the hub, which is then powering everything else, plus charging your smart tablet or smartphone, well, what would happen is that your smart tablet or your smartphone will start dying quickly. It will just drain the battery to keep everything else alive. Now, as you can see, I've got a lot of gear here, and this is a normal studio session for me. If I try to power this with this thing that I got with my iPad Pro, which is only able to give out a maximum of 20 watts, well, the iPad is gonna die really quickly. So what's the solution? Well, usually laptop power supplies are really well built. They usually don't produce weird sounds or anything. They have clean, stable power, good protection circuits, and they're usually built to last you a very, very long time. And so that's what I recommend. And this is what I got. You see, I don't have money coming out of my ass, and I really like Apple's power supplies. They're very clean, well-built devices. So, to save money, I went and bought a used one at an auction site. I found this. Here's the model number and here's the output rating. 87 watts. That's more than enough for my session. And I got it for 30 bucks. It's a no-brainer deal. Now, the problem with these ones, though, is that <laughs> they're kind of big and a bit bulky. And yeah, it looks really awful having them placed here with my other adapters. So what I did was I kept searching this auction site and I found this for under five bucks. These usually go for 15 bucks and up here in Sweden. Don't know why they had it at this price, but I instantly bought it because no brainer deal. Right, so if you wanna go hunting for a power supply yourself, make sure you're looking for power supplies starting at at least 65 watts and up, preferably higher, because the more you use your stuff, the more stuff you're gonna add to your stuff and the more power you're gonna need. So start from at least 65 watts and up. Now, the next thing you need to think about is how you're getting that power from the actual power supply to the hub. And you're doing that with, well, in this case, it's a USB-C cable. Now, I got a cable here rated at 100 watts because the PSU is rated up to 87 watts. The hub is rated to 100 watts. And if you want all of that power to flow through without a problem, you don't want one of those thin cables rated at 50 watts, 60 watts, or 20 watts. Again, I cannot stress how important this power business is. Do not skimp on this, people. If you want your sessions to run stably, make sure you have enough power and good cables to supply that power. So what's it really like working with this hub? Well, it's very straightforward. 
Right now I've got it connected directly to my iPad with this new long cable, which is so super, it's super nice. And to this hub, I have connected an external hard drive. I've also got a professional sound interface connected to it. And then I also have LAN network connected to it. And then I have a display from the HDMI port. And with that, I can, well, basically preview my video that I'm working on right here on the screen. And yeah, I mean, it's not the best screen I'm using, but but all of this just works, which is super nice. And let me just show you the file access, which is so nice with this because you can have SD cards and you can also have the external hard drive. So I'm just gonna take the SD card from my camera here and put it into the hub. And then we're just gonna go to the uh, file app and enter the uh, SD card and then go in here and check some of the photos. And yeah, I mean, this works and it's super nice. Uh, what the, what is this? Okay, so let's check the hard drive. All we need to do is to locate the hard drive in the files app here and there we got access to it. The, I mean, this is super nice, especially if you're working with large video files on an external drive so you don't have to clog up your iPad space or, or smart tablet space, whatever you might be working with. I, I just like working like this when I work with LumaFusion. So my final thoughts on this hub. Now, there is this one thing that I know that a lot of people will complain about, and it is the lack of a headphone port, especially people from within the iDevice community, people who are using iPads and iPhones. Yeah, I get it that you want a headphone port on your hub. And the reason to why I don't need it is because I always intended this to be my studio hub. And in my studio, I have a professional sound interface. It has two headphone ports on it with proper amplifiers and those outputs can drive proper studio headphones. However, if you still want to go with the Union Pro Plus, then there is a solution for that lack of a headphone port. You could get a mini USB-A headphone port dongle. And I've got a video about that and you can find links to all of my USB-C hub related videos down in the pinned comment. If you like the work I do here on YouTube, then give me a thumbs up. And if you don't like the work I do here on YouTube, then give me a thumbs up. If you want to support me in any ways, then you've got a load of, of links and stuff. And yeah, as usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.